You're listening to Nick DiPaolo on the Riotcast Network, riotcast.com. Ladies and gentlemen, of course, it's a fucking Monday. Ah, uh, Monday. I'm telling you, there's five Mondays in a week and two Tuesdays. That's how I see life. I never wake up and go, oh, it's Saturday. That happens once a year. And even that's not fun now, knowing I have to do comedy. With them. I'm a fucking lazy guy is what I'm trying to tell you people. Good to be with you. How's your onion? Big enough to make my eyes water? I bet it is, you big bitches. Listen. I want to thank the people that came out Friday night, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, the Red Hook Brewery, uh, sold out. Not a huge venue. I'm not going to pretend here, but it was packed and got to see my old college roommate, quarterback from University of Maine, Richie. He used to make me laugh as hard as anybody, Richie Labonte, and my other buddy, Ricky Lampier, who <laughs> I went to middle school with. He has the same personality. He's got a computer company with like 80 people under him, but he has the same giggly, stupid fifth grade personality. Love him. Of course, his girlfriend was yapping throughout the show. I wanted to open her head like a ripe melon, but she was kind of cute, so I didn't. And uh, she was humping my leg after the show when we were taking pictures. <laughs> and Ricky's just going, oh, my buddy Ricky with a gray beard. He looks like the most interesting man. You know the commercial with his Dos Equis? He's the most interesting man in Lewiston, Maine. <laughs> Gray hair, gray beard, and uh, it was good seeing those guys. And uh, and then Saturday night, I got to be honest with you, didn't have that many people up at Poughkeepsie. That's because we've worked the market. We've pounded that area pretty good. But the Bardavan is this old gorgeous theater. You know, it's huge. It's way. It's it, it's it, it's you know, Gaffigan should be playing there. Whatever, not me. But the people that came, it was my favorite show of the tour so far. It was just, there was no pressure. Tommy took off, the promoter before, because he's got another thing. <laughs> Guy's so busy. And uh, it was intimate, yet this huge theater, and they fucking caught every word. And I was so excited because I threw some new stuff in there. I changed the order of some bits, and it just flowed. It meshed. I was excited. I go, I cannot wait to fucking get home and listen to this. I get home, lay on my couch, you know, I record it with my iPhone, and I go to the fucking voice memo. It's not there. I never turn the recorder on. <laughs> I started the stopwatch like an asshole, and just, I'm worried, man. You guys think I'm kidding. My dad has Alzheimer's, and it's it's congenital, I hear. I'm telling you, I'm fucking worried about my, I just left my goddamn phone here in the kitchen next to the pretzels. <laughs> I got rock salt all over my iPhone. I fucking salt the apple. But uh, the, that 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 Poughkeepsie gig was my favorite of all of them. The numbers were uh, it wasn't that again. I didn't do any <laughs> didn't do any radio or anything. Uh, but they were they caught everything. The sound was great. The a big huge stage, black curtain, just bare bones. It, it was fucking and like uh, Fiori said, there's pictures of Lou Reed in the green room and and, and the people that played there. And I'm like, what am I doing here? I got to believe Mickey Dolenz is on the way. Uh, <laughs> it was my favorite gig. Not to mention I made it home in 40 minutes down the Taconic with both feet on the gas pedal at 110. 866-969-1969. 866-969-1969. It's just why I got into comedy. It wasn't a comedy. It was a nice theater. The people paid to fucking hear what you had to say. And it just flowed beautifully, and I was home with a you know a little chunk of change in my pocket. I was home by fucking uh, ten thirty. Earlier than that, wait, the show was at eight. We got done at about quarter. To, yeah, I was home about ten thirty. I was in my sweats and my fucking pizza stained sweatshirt by quarter of eleven. My hand on my balls by ten of eleven. Out like a light at eleven oh six. It just, it just, it's. It, 
They had a parking spot for me up front. I'm very, you know. 866-969. Uh, Mark, relax about the, the response to the Syrian gas attack, will you? Can I, can I set the agenda for my own fucking show? Jesus Christ. The only response to that is a fucking gas attack on them. That's how I play. An eye for an eye? How about a barrel of chlorine for a barrel of chlorine? But no, the fucking media, the, whatever, we'll get to that in a few minutes. But I, I just enjoyed the weekend. I, Tommy Nicky shows up at the Red Hook Brewery. The guy he was dealing with actually quit or something at the Red Hook Brewery. Tommy luckily drives around with his own PA system. Sets up the lights, the stage. He's collecting money at the... He, this guy's a man's man. I'm looking at him. I couldn't organize my sister's birthday party. This fucking guy throws a comedy show together. Sold out and, 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 and still has time to pick us up a deli platter on his own. I'm just saying, some guys get it done. I have the energy of a cancer patient in his late 70s. Uh, nobody's calling because I haven't talked about anything. Other than my fucking weekend. Anybody watch the Masters? That's where I am, energy-wise. I watched it from two to the end. And uh, I know you didn't. But uh, I can see why you're distracted. You got ranges eliminated. Uh. <laughs> By the way, my Bruins stunk it up last night. They had to play a makeup game. Them in Florida were the only team playing last night in the whole NHL. It was a makeup game from a snow out. If the Bruins win, they win the division. And the conference, I'm guessing, because no? Uh, I don't think so. Well, Tampa won the conference, and we if we won last uh, night, we would have. Right. I might be wrong, I might be wrong, but they would have won the division. So I'm figuring they're gonna come out flying. They did play the night before against Ottawa. They laid an egg last night like I have never seen. I almost thought it was a bag job. I go, what? It seriously, they look like they were skating in mud. They were slow, uninterested. I couldn't fucking believe it. You win, you win the goddamn uh, uh I'm I'm talking about I'm talking about hockey people like what about the <laughs> What about the Syrian gas attack? Fuck those people. I'm talking about my Bruins. Not important. Okay, a few kids get bleach in their eyes. Listen, Pastanak has to pick up the pace. <laughs> ah, come on, Mike! Oh, 8.07? <laughs> I thought it'd be 8.21. Give me one of those nights, huh? Hand me that needle, Brendan. 866-969-1960. And I call me if you're at the show and then uh, took a lot of pictures and shit. Snuck out on Poughkeepsie. I had to get out of there. I saw, this is, let me describe Poughkeepsie and I couldn't come up with it for the show. First thing I see is I pull into downtown Poughkeepsie. I see like a, not a homeless guy, but a guy who might be homeless, but he had a coat on. He's got a, he's got a like, and I'm not shitting you. This is a grown man I'd say in his 40s or 50s with like a gray beard. And he's kind of dirty and he's got a Hello Kitty book bag. <laughs> that tiny little Hello, I swear to God, it was a, like the little girls wear on his back. If that's not Poughkeepsie in a nutshell, and if that, that thing wasn't filled with fucking blow. Or the little girl. Or the little girl, exactly. Her feet and hands and part of her head. <laughs> the rest of her is tough. It's gristle. You ever eat a five-year-old? They're all fucking chewy and shit. da 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 um, I was going to get to the, uh, the, uh, you know what? The masters. Patrick Reed won. And, uh, yeah, I do. I don't play golf, but I watch it. That's sad. But the masters I'll watch, but I like this, this kid, he's a dumpy looking He's got no athletic body whatsoever. He looks like he should be fixing your copier at work or a, if a, you know, a vending machine went down at the Motel 6. Just a fucking working class. And uh, so I was pulling for him. This guy can putt his balls off. And 
He's a working class stiff. He wins the Masters and he gets like a tepid response. Everybody's pulling the pretty boy who I love, Spieth. Everybody's pulling for Spieth and for fucking Ricky Fowler. All the pretty people were pulling, you know, and I was kind of, it was bugging me. I wanted this fucking working class stiff who can play golf like you wouldn't believe. And then I read a fucking article about him. That's a good picture of him. That's, he does not look like that now. That's way too healthy. There you go. He looks scared in the picture. But he's like a working class. All the rest of the golfers are pretty boys and, and every all the fucking girls are drooling over. They all have titleist deals and shit. And this guy's kind of cocky or whatever, but like a working class stiff, you know, reminded me of this. Well, I'll guarantee you'll never be a member here. Member? Are you kidding? You think I'd join this crummy snobatorium? But this whole place sucks. <laughs> That was him as they put in the green jacket on him. But listen to this. You know, everybody else has a big following. They were talking about him. He had his brother-in-law caddying for him and his wife, Justin, who was Justine, who was chairing in the outside of the ropes. And his estranged mother, Jeanette Reed, who issued an early tweet that included go Patrick Reed. But he's from like a dysfunctional family. It's uh, It says in the article, it's all either documented or whispered, the reported tension between the Reeds and Patrick's parents, Bill and Jeanette. And the nasty back and forth on social media where Justine claimed Patrick was abused physically and verbally by his parents. Accusations his parents have denied. We also know about the times his parents who weren't invited to Patrick's wedding, <laughs> okay, were escorted out of the 2014 U.S. Open, supposedly at the request of Justine, and how his parents, who live in Augusta, have had little contact with Patrick, Justine, or the two children. Normally, parents are among the first uh, thanked when someone wins a major, but when asked if it was bittersweet not to share winning the Masters with his parents, Reed answered, revealed, all you need to know. I'm just out here to play golf and try to win golf tournaments. <laughs> So I was pulling for it, and I didn't know any of that backstory. I just liked the fact that he looked kind of, uh, you know, not like an athlete. I always pull for the, you know, the work, working class, whatever. And I guess he went to, he went to, um, I don't know, Georgia State, uh, whatever. He won two national titles at whatever college down there in Georgia. And But somebody accused him of, like, cheating on a scorecard in a practice round or something. Whatever. So he wasn't that well liked. But he goes into Augusta and sticks it up their ass. So, uh, Jack in L.A., he says uh, he's going to school us on Patrick's history of cheating. What is it exactly, Jack, he was accused of? Well, I, I wasn't, I, that's <laughs> not really all the story. Apparently, you know, he was kicked out of his original school. I mean, you said they went to a school in Georgia, but he originally yeah. had gone to a different yeah. golf school. Um, and by the way, I, you were mentioning his physique. I've heard the term fat trick thrown around. Yeah, that, that stinks, uh, but go ahead. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so, but apparently it's not just that he was cheating, uh, that he's just generally disliked. One of the other things was that he was apparently accused of stealing money out of uh, his roommate's uh, room, apparently like $400. And so... He's just kind of brash, and you were just saying that he was not really, you know, well received. And I think that's, you know, part of it. I don't know exactly, you know, any of the truth of what was said, but apparently, yeah. when he got kicked out, they did mention that <laughs> the reports were true. He get kicked out of what school? DeVry? You know, I don't know. I I, I did <laughs> only a cursory glance at the article. That's more than I did. I was. Pl yeah, I was playing catch up on the story of who Patrick Reed was also today. So. <laughs> Well, all right, I'll sign off. I love the show, Nick. Take thanks, care. Jack. Appreciate it. Good call. That's why the show is great. You guys can fill me in on the facts. I just, I don't give a shit. I like that he's, as they said in the article, he came into Augusta with a black hat and he left with a green jacket. Yeah. Oh, not a good guy. Accused of this, that, and the other thing. Yeah. Not a gentleman. Doesn't fit into the, well, doesn't fit into the. Well. I'll guarantee you'll never be a member here. Member? Are you kidding? You think I'd join this crummy snobatorium? But this whole place sucks. <laughs> um, anyways. He had all the best golfers chasing him. 
Spieths, the fucking Ricky Fowlers and all the big names biting on his heels. The fucking Rory McElroys, who everybody wanted to win. I love it. I like the Raiders in the 70s. They were hated because they cheated and fucking, I like the bad guy. I like the bad guy, okay? That's what I say. Let's go to Brendan in California. Brendan? Hey, Nick. How's it going, man? Pretty good. How you doing? Good. Uh, so me and my, my best friend are huge fans of yours, and I'm just curious if you have any uh, tour dates planned here in uh, the hardcore liberal Bay Area anytime soon. Of course not. I hate that fucking area. I hope it blows up in a snowstorm. Wait a minute. That made no sense. Um, no, I, I eventually will get out there. I, I had an interesting conversation with an old boss of mine today and um, as far as a, a, a tour and put him in touch with somebody else. So uh, this thing isn't going to die and uh, we will make it out there. I can't say when, Brendan, but, um, you know, I need the dough. And, uh, Got it. Well, I'll, I'll definitely look out for it, man. Where are you, Brendan, exactly? Uh, I live about an hour west of, or about an hour north of San Francisco. Hour north of San Is that Walnut Creek area or no? Yeah, well, I live uh, 20 minutes from Walnut Creek. <laughs> How's that for a guess? <laughs> I love that. I, I did Walnut Creek with Bobby Slayton. We co headline. How's that for two fucking. Oh, man. It was called the Battery of Acid Tour. I fucking. <laughs> People went nuts. I bet they hated you out there. Oh, no, they loved us. This was fucking 20 years ago. When they, San Francisco, fucking, they used, the punchline used to have me twice a year. I mean, Bobby Slayton is as politically incorrect as you can get. He could run for mayor, maybe, or well, he could. I don't know if that's the case anymore, but he could have ran for the mayor of San Francisco. That's why I used to appreciate uh, Sam, but I, but I think you're right. I think it's probably changed in these fascist fuck stains from the left. We'll try to shut us down, but that's all right. I carry a pistol now. I got to conceal and stab. But uh, we'll make it out there, Brendan. Cool. Well, if you do, man, definitely uh, I will for sure buy a ticket. All right, buddy. Thanks. Have a good one. Take it easy. Scott in Massachusetts uh, came to the show uh, Friday night at the Red Hook Brewery. Scott, what's going on, fella? Hey, Nikki. Just wanted to let you know we had a great time. I brought my wife, my daughter, my son-in-law. They, My wife and daughter had never heard your comedy before, <laughs> and they had never laughed so hard. She, my wife said her stomach hurt when she laughed. Yeah, they, so, ain't virgins yeah. No, they ain't virgins no more, Scott. No, Nikki, they are not. And <laughs> you keep you keep a, you keep going like that, and you'll be out of that attic of a brewery someday before you know it. <laughs> I was out of it the next night, funny. Scott. I was at a nice theater the next night, so kiss my grits. Oh, well, that's good. See, I knew it would pay off. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> All right, glad. So I wanted to tell you we had a great time. It was we. It was the best. The best night of the weekend. It was. We had a blast too, man. It was a great. We had, it was a great venue, and uh, yeah, absolutely. And thank you for bringing everybody out, and we'll see you again. All right, take care, Nick. Have See a good Scotty. show. All right. How about the FBI raiding fucking uh, Cohen's uh, office, his hotel? The FBI needs to be fucking... We don't have anything that take them down a notch. They can bust into your house now and take shit. I mean... Huh? Where's the warrant? Was the paperwork filled out at the CVS? Yeah. I kind of like the idea of a lawyer named Cohen having the FBI climbing up his ass. I got to be honest with you. What? Globalists? Is that what you said, Brent? <laughs> I'm, read I'm reading Brendan's racist. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, what the fuck? They go to his hotel room. They go to his apartment. What is this? This is the reason we got, we busted off from England, isn't it? Well, when the FBI. What? It wasn't the FBI. They uh, yeah, it was. saw it and uh, passed it along to... To uh, who? To, the uh, Eagle the, Scouts? I believe so. Who? <laughs> to the New York State Police, I believe. I don't, I don't believe that for a second. I believe it was the FBI in some cases. You might be right. Again. But uh, either way, stay out of our shit. Bart North Carolina has an opinion on the Cohen raid. Bart. Yes, sir. Nicky D. Good to talk to you again. Listen, I think it's very scary... That a um, an FBI that's under the microscope, yes, for for for, for um, uh, misdealing, is actually not even raiding. Um, he, he he raided his personal lawyers. Yeah, face. 
Yeah. So what is that? I just want to get your take on how does that make you feel comfortable going and talking to your lawyer or your doctor? Or no, exactly. Supposed to have that privilege. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what happened to confidentiality and all that shit? They break into Cohen's office. He's got all those files and they grab everything off the computer. And you could be a client of Cohen's. Not me personally. I can't afford a guy like Cohen. I got a guy <laughs> named Dino Bruni Nelly. Um, but uh, no, that's a no. That, that's a great point, it, it, and especially with what we've seen, the FBI is capable of right now. Uh, it, it it smells like we're living in a third world shithole. Is what it smells like to me, Bart. But uh, well, well you- exactly. I think when you when you when you've clearly gotten uh, when you've clearly got proof of a, an FBI that's been tainted by. Uh, political uh, agenda yeah uh, you don't want to see them raiding the president's personal lawyers or anybody's personal lawyers um uh compounds to, to, to retrieve documents and, and if they retrieve it what can they do with it it's it's privileged information information <laughs> it's privileged information they find it at the bing <laughs> I don't, no, yeah, you, yes, you know, I, I want to hear your thought uh, on that all right bart <laughs> you heard it i have thank you um yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it. Fucking Mc- bunch of, you know, confidentiality is one thing. But I, you know, what I think, they they were hoping to, Cohen is the guy, right, who used his own money to hush up Stormy Daniels, which they're trying to turn that into a, con, you know, a, a campaign contribution, which turns into, you know, uh, impeachment, or whatever, obstruction, whatever. That's what they're going for there. But Jesus, like he just said, Bart just said, what if you're a client of Mr. Cohen's and all your shit, you know? Then again, if they didn't scoop up your personal information, Facebook would have got it. So you can't win, folks. You're fucked. <laughs> it's not the FBI. It's fucking Zuckerberg's people. I'm telling you. Uh, I must have ate too much this week. And my butt, my, my fucking belt is cutting into my belly like a f- fucking samurai. Brian in Georgia has an update on Patrick Reed's uh, <laughs> his history. Hey, what's up, buddy? Hey, Brian, what's going on? Hey, you kind of switched gears on me, so I'll give you a quick update for Patrick Reed. Okay. He went to the University of Georgia here in Athens, uh, and he did get kicked off the team for cheating and stealing, et cetera. But um, you switched gears on me. Did you see the story today? Apparently, one of de Blasio's aides got busted with a loaded handgun that was missing two cartridges from the magazine clip. No, uh, I, di- I did not. Youth. So it's like a 42-year-old woman uh, that got uh, arrested on felony handgun possession charges. The the handgun had the serial number filed off. Yeah. Um, and there was a video of her or somebody discharging the weapon from the car. Um, and she's like in charge of New York City youth or something for de Blasio. And what color? But, uh, what anyway, color? Hey, what story. color is she? Uh, I'll give you a guess. I mean, I'm, I, I'm not sure, but uh, I'm pretty sure she is not like you and I, my friend. Well, I'm pretty um, dark, so I'm guessing she's like me. Um, <laughs> All right, man. Well, I love you, dirty fucking dago. <laughs> See you later, bro. <laughs> dirty fucking dago. See, that's it said Brian from Georgia. They still hate Italians. They're fucking... Meanwhile, we're more redneckish than you are, you numbnuts. Uh, de Blasio A. Oh, what color is she? Nick, why is that important? <laughs> because if she was fucking white, they would have stressed it. Go ahead. Look at her. What is she? Uh, What's her, her name? Reagan. Stevens. Reagan Stevens. <laughs> Jesus Christ, she's got two last names. What a mess. <laughs> Let's call her Anderson Cooper. <laughs> yeah, she's she's kind of brownish. Tony and Poughkeepsie. Hey, hey, Nick, how are you, bud? What's up, T? He came to the show Saturday night. How are you? Yes, I did. I, I brought my wife, and uh, she was on the fence about seeing you because she's, you know, a little bit liberal. liberal. Yeah. But uh, she laughed her ass off, bro. She So she laughed. There you go. She's a liberal, but she enjoyed herself. She laughed her ass off. That's because I'm fucking funny. Doesn't matter what your <laughs> politics I, I are. You. That was my favorite <laughs> show, by the way, Tony, so far, of the... It was just it was a, uh, it was a, it was a, it was a small intimate area, man. I yeah, we, yeah. Were, we felt like we were seeing something that we you know that nobody else got to see. <laughs> it was fun. I fucking really yeah. enjoyed it. So uh, you tell your wife that I love it to death, and to, to keep her chin up. <laughs> All right, brother. All right, love Tom. the show, man. Keep Th- it up. Thanks. <clears throat> I'm clearing my throat. 
Fiore sent me a story about a girl who, uh, she a teenager, and the school made her cover up her protruding nipples in high school. Now, why would you do such a thing? I mean, who doesn't enjoy a nice rock-hard nipple from the guidance counselor down to the janitor and everything in between? Why would you do that? We can talk about that for hours on end. And my big story tonight is the CEO of Twitter, fucking Jack Dorsey. He endorsed this article that somebody wrote on uh, Medium, a website called Medium about driving conservatives from public life. And Dorsey endorsed the article. He retweeted it and shit. This is a guy that runs Twitter and is so unbiased. So he can kiss my sister's ass. That's all I got is fucking lefties who like a rigged game. That's all it is. And uh, I also got... Uh, remember Diamond and Silk, the two black chicks who loved Trump? They're like all, all the black women. They're like roommates or whatever. I don't know if they're lovers or sisters. I don't know what they are, but they're very entertaining and funny and lighthearted. And they were huge Trump fans during the election. Well, they get suspended by Facebook. Facebook considers them unsafe to the community. The only... Uh, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> two of the... Two, ah, forget it. Even here, I'm afraid. 866... 969-1969, but we'll talk about, I'd like to hear from you guys about uh, the Twitter CEO um, endorsing this article. They think we should go the way of California. That's what it, th th this article, saying California's right, that's the future, and blah, 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 real leftist fuck. And that us, people who lean right, need to be, literally, our voices need to be distinguished from public conversation. So uh, that means Twitter, the guy who runs it, is full of shit. It's as fucking partisan as I thought it was. May he die in his sleep in a fiery crash. And uh, I want I'd like to hear from some of you guys out there who, who think you're being shadow banned. Nobody's seeing my... I put a picture up of me choking a, a premature baby and nobody fucking got two likes. So I got to feel... <laughs> 866-969-1969. Back with the second segment right after this. You're listening to the Nick DiPaolo Show on Faction Talk, Sirius XM 103. Jimmy Kimmel and Hannity went at it over the weekend. Kimmel apologizes to Hannity for harmful comments. Uh, he apologized to Henry on Sunday, appearing to end a week, uh, week long feud between the two talk show hosts over Kimmel's making light of first lady Melania's uh, accent. Well, I think I have a clip somewhere of that. Uh. No White House Easter celebration would be complete without story time from our first lady. Never stop exploring cause life would be boring. <laughs> be clever. I'm curious, just like a cat. Ask lots of questions about this and that. <laughs> <laughs> about this and that. <laughs> this is brutal. Liberal Jimmy Kimmel making fun of the first lady of the United States and her involvement in the White House Easter egg roll, even her accents. Jimmy, you're a despicable disgrace. <laughs> hey, uh, Mr. Kimmel, that's her fifth language. How many do you speak? I mean, come on. And, I, and I, I like both these fucking guys. But I mean, I think Sean was overreacting a little bit here. You know? And I like, you know, Matt Hannity. A uh, few times. But he's, you know, you gotta, you, 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 Sean, come on. What the fuck? Really? Was that that vicious? I mean, they, I mean he said all the shit. And then he, he went back at Hannity, you know, talking about Hannity supporting Roy Moore and shit. And, you know, he's fucking dug in his heels but Kimmel's done a lot worse than that as far as Trump and monologues and and uh so I thought you know you, you, you conservatives you gotta fucking show a little bit of I mean that was you know but here's my other point Jimmy Kimmel would never do that about Michelle Obama ever and how she you know again looks like a strong safety for the fucking Kansas City Chiefs who runs a four four eight forty. And you can tell she doesn't like Whitey. She got that fake grin and 
You can tell she hates Whitey. In my, that's my opinion. But Kimmel would never go near that. Neither would fucking anybody else. Still afraid of the black fucking, you know. But uh, then Kimmel, uh, in his apology, raised the death threats he and his family got last year after he talked about his newborn son's life could be affected if lawmakers voted to remove coverage for pre-existing conditions in Obamacare. That, that's the shit I would get riled up. The vile attacks against my wife and wishes for death of my infant son are shocking, and I encourage... See, whoever wrote this article has to throw that in there to give it some fucking, you know... Uh, shocking, and I encourage those who made them to give their words and actions thought. Kemmel wrote to his 11 million followers. I, too, will give my words more thought and recognize my role in inciting their hatefulness. But so, you see what he's doing there? He's comparing those hateful people wishing his baby died. To what he said. You know, I mean, he's kind of, you know, I was making fun of her accent. You want my kids dead. So, you know, it's kind of a backhanded apology, maybe. You get, you get what I'm going from? Addressing Hannity directly, Kimmel said he takes the Fox News anchor at his word that he was genuinely offended by what I believed, still believed to be a harmless and silly aside, referencing our first lady's accent, which I kind of agree with him there, too. But uh, my point, Jimmy, is, you know, You'd never do it to Michelle Obama. Neither would Fallon. Neither would Colbert. Which is just fucking ballless, in my opinion. Let's go to Robert in Los Angeles. Uh, used one of my jokes at work, and now everyone thinks he's an asshole. I don't believe it, but go ahead, Robert. Hey, Nick, what's up, my man? <laughs> where, where are you working? The fucking Nancy Pelosi Library? <laughs> <laughs> I do security over here in the fucking Mexican part of town, so you can imagine. <laughs> but, uh, no, I was just listening to what you just said right now with uh, Jimmy Kimmel talking shit about a uh, millennial's accent. Yeah. I don't know if you knew this, about a few years ago on Telemundo, there was a reporter who made a joke about Michelle Obama because they do the thing, they, they, uh, they comment on the fashion and shit. Yeah. And he said that, uh, he said that she looked like a character from the Planet of the Apes. And he got fucking fired Ooh. the next day. Yeah. Well, that's a little, <laughs> that's a little much. That was good. <laughs> that's, <laughs> what, he, he, this was a guy that worked on Telemundo that said that? Yeah, I'm, I'm a fucking beaner if you didn't know it by my accent already. But yeah, <laughs> I was watching Telemundo and then they had a, this guy was just talking about oh, how everyone looked, all the celebrities. Yeah. And then he made a, he made a little joke about how she looked like, I think, Caesar. From fucking apes. Oh God! And then he was he was gone. Yeah, that's not a little joke. That's a big joke. But you can still fucking zing her. You could still zing her. You know, you gotta know how to fucking zing people. Like I'd go after her eighteen inch neck and say she looks like a tight end for the eagle. And, you know, and then or, <laughs> then people her, can't her say her racist gums. <laughs> What's that? Or her fucking gums that stick out. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Don't even smile, Mrs. President. Yeah, nobody got, you know, everybody treated her and Barack with kid gloves. It's so fucking sickening. Yeah. This country and its black guilt, white guilt, I should say, about fucking slavery. Oh, you should watch yourself, Nick. They're going to get you next. Yeah, Jesus, I right? know, I know. Okay, so this is why I called. So the other day when you said the, you were talking about Stephen Hawking and how he got the fucking Jaguar commercial and you were mad. Yes. Because your manager can't get you shit. Yeah. I was laughing so fucking hard when you said the hashtag wheels up when you were describing Steven on the beach with his side chick. I almost went over the fucking sidewalk. I was laughing so hard. Did I say that? We had a meeting. We had a meeting uh, this Monday or last Monday. Yeah. And my boss was talking about, uh, you know, clients who have special needs and you have to make special accommodations for them. Yeah. And then I brought up, I stole your bit. I'm a fucking joke thief. Sorry, but I thought it was going to be a good time. Yeah. So I brought up the Stephen Hawking joke, and then I tried to hit him with the punchline of hashtag wheels up, and I got fucking crickets. <laughs> Everyone stopped what they were doing and looked at me, and it was, I thought I was going to get fired. I was like, holy yeah, shit. That's because you're in Los Angeles, and political correctness emanates from that city. It's just fucking swimming oh, in it. Oh, no, it's not even the best part. What? Fucking after the meeting, everyone's picking up their papers, and I just, I have my fucking tail between my legs, like, oh, Jesus, this is rough. <laughs> my supervisor's like, hey, why'd you say that? I was like, I thought it was just a joke. Oh. And he's like, you know, Jim, he, his son has autism, right? 
Yeah, so, so the, the owner f- of the company has his son's a fucking waterhead, so he got offended by that joke. Yeah, you oh, know what? Geez. Tough shit. Tell him, look, fucking, I left, uh, you should I was say, on look, the way home. He's got a waterhead, baby. You guys, don't you have a fucking drought going on out there? Tap his skull. <laughs> Tap his it's head like a fuck. fucking keg of Miller Lite. Let that shit squirt all over the rug. All right, Robert. I I'm sorry I got you in trouble right, at work, but I appreciate the call, buddy. All right, ladies, Nick. All right. That is the mentality of the left, by the way. That's not funny. My sister's husband used to hit her. Yeah, I didn't get the fucking... Uh, I saw you laughing at the AIDS joke and the, you know, paraplegic material I was doing. You're howling at that, but when it hit Holmes, it's not... That's how, that's how they think as a group, though. Do you understand how... Do you ever think about how sanctimonious that is? The left calling everybody else racist and bigoted. That means they really believe they are morally fucking superior to if you if you sit there and let that sink in it'll make you fucking angry they that's where they start the conversation like they have never thought had a racist thought or misogynist thought or uttered a, a, a racist uh, you know sexist word ever it makes my blood boil Mike in Atlanta thinks I'm trying to be controversial. What are you fucking talking about, Mike? I'm just talking about what's in the news. <laughs> hey, hey, Nick, I, I just don't understand your end game. I mean, you know, you make these... Ain't no jokes, end game, Mike. Why are they going to be an end game? I'm just doing my thing. Well, no, I mean, you know, it's always got to be, you know, some type of career advancement, but, you know, <laughs> you got to... You radio? Really? Go ahead. Well, I, I just kind of think, like, you know, you kind of make these jokes about Michelle Obama being like a lamb. But, but it's like it like gets crickets every time. If it's Oh, really? You know, Why don't you go watch my funny. special? Gets crickets? Go watch fucking Raw Nerve. Tell me you got crickets. Well, I mean, like I say, hey, I'm a fan of comedy. If it's funny, it's just funny. Yeah. And that's just like, I mean, I, I just yeah. think sometimes, I think you, you're trying to gain, like, an audience of, like, I don't know, rednecks and far right people uh, already got a mic saint my first no, radio I mic I, I think that you can you can your comedy i've listened to you on you know howard stern i'm a big howard stern fan i just think your comedy is like you know far is funnier than you know the weak stuff you put out trying to be controversial and play to this small audience is probably not even going to support you. I think that if you just stuck to the funny stuff, like, yeah. you know that, Michelle, you, you say that Michelle Obama joke, like, every day, and it's like, yeah. okay, it wasn't funny the first time, and yeah. it's not funny yeah. now. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, now, can you shut like, up? And, hey, can you shut up and let me talk now? You're a typical fucking lefty. You sound like a typical I'm fucking a black. Lefty. You're a typical fucking black. How? Because you want me to just be funny and not talk politics. You want me to shut you my can mouth talk like. Talk politics you want to. Oh, bullshit. Mike, you fucking. Come on, man. You sound very ignorant I tonight. I voted for Trump. I yeah, so Trump. what? I told you that before. So what? But, but I'm saying you, you, you do stuff, and it's like the last caller. I guess he's some in. Mexican guy that's down with a white man, I guess. Uh, that's, that's and that's how you guess, and that's how you see the world, either down with a white guy or down with a black. No, now you sound you silly. It. That's how you. That's see not. It. That's I'm reporting the news, Mike. I'm reporting it. It's you, not how I see it. You you said earlier. <laughs> I, I wonder what race that person was. Yeah, like, I do. I do uh, because they don't mention it when it's a black person who commits the crime. I don't know if you've noticed that. It's very irresponsible reporting. And I'm just well, calling. You know, and Atlanta, when I point that out, you don't like it because you don't. You you're not around white people who speak their fucking mind, and 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 you can't handle it. I'm around all kinds of people all the time. I like in the fact <laughs> that I even I'm, I'm a black person. I say, hey, I voted for Trump, but I'm just saying if, if things were funny, I would laugh. I mean, you hey, know, Mike, like Mike, you Mike, 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 you're kind of funny, Mike, Mike. Why do you think the rest of the world thinks only what you find funny is funny? I've been doing this thirty years and I'm still fucking but relevant. Your channel is not even so, that big right now. What? On, on this, on the, on the, you're, Nobody, not that many people is listening to your channel here. And the reason why, because it's not that fun. How do you know, Mike? How do you know how many people are listening? Uh, well, because uh, you... I, 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 I really believe that you, every day you try to get on the radio hoping to snag a headline so you can get on 
to the, you know, get on onto the news and people are tune in to see who who you are. I think that, you know, it's kind of like yeah, that's the whole idea behind it's radio. Like well, with with like Artie Lang, like Artie Artie used to be controversial and all that. As soon as he left Stern, the man is in a crack house somewhere, and 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 you're just trying to go that. Trajectory yeah, and you you really got funny, Mike. Though. You got me nailed, buddy. You fucking you got me pegged. I'm gonna start shooting heroin tonight and see if I can. All right, I gave you enough time. Thank you, Mike. All right. There's something wrong with the black man's mind. There's something wrong with his mind. There's something wrong with the black man's mind. There's something wrong with his mind. No, they're ignorant. That's ignorant. That's the dumbest mic has ever sounded. We've had him on many times. I'm trying to, I don't do, you hear, it's your end game. I got an end game. It's the reason people like me. I don't have an agenda. I call them like I see them, Mike. But once again, you're not around enough white people who speak the fucking from their gut because most of them are afraid to. That's all. Larry in North Carolina. Larry, uh, what's going on, Larry? I'm glad there's the mics in the world to critique comedy for the pros so that the pros can tweak their act. Yeah, everybody's <laughs> an expert on comedy because, see, at one point, Mike and everybody else has made somebody laugh in their life, so they know what we do for a living, and it's very simple. Uh, they could do it, too, but they'd rather work at the mattress factory 100 hours a week supporting their 11 fucking kids. Well, they're using the wrong side of the mat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got to tell you, the Hannity and the uh, Kimmel thing, and Hannity was playing all kinds of clips from Jimmy Kimmel when he was on the Man Show, talking about how twisted and sick he was. He was playing all that stuff on his show, on the radio, and like yeah, I I'm heard, like, I heard all that stuff. I, I wasn't even crazy about the fucking Man Show because it just made men look stupid and simple, and some of it was funny, but you know, well. I, you know, I I don't I don't participate in a lot of popular culture, so I'm not really in anybody's demographic. They're trying to get the old white haired fat guy audience <laughs> money. I don't have a, you know I'm not I'm not spending a lot of discretionary income. You know, so I'm not really in anybody's demographic. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you, I don't know why people are surprised about the left wing suppressing right wing speech. Does anybody remember 2012 when two Democrat senators wrote the IRS alarmed at the rise of the grassroots Tea Party movement and their loud voice? And guess what? They used all the power of government to shut up the fuck up. Yeah, that's I right. I don't know why anybody's surprised at left wing suppressing speech. Last I checked, every communist dictatorship in the world was a leftist socialist scumbag. And gee, they're into killing people and shutting them the fuck up. Right. Now, right-wingers, we don't mind believing in the arena of ideas because they're fucking idiots. Go ahead and spout your shit. Nobody agrees with you, dumbass. Put everything you want on CNN. There's less than a million people listening in a country with a population of over 300 million. I don't think they're reaching a lot of fucking people. I don't give a hoot to hell what they put on their stupid network. <laughs> Nobody's listening. Nobody gives a shit. And as for Mr. DiPaolo, I guess he's been doing comedy for 30 years, and Mike, you haven't. I think Mr. DiPaolo knows what the fuck he's doing. He's able to reach and entertain an audience. I think that makes him a modern-day raconteur. That's what I'm thinking. There you I go. Mean, space. I mean, come on, people. I've been doing comedy for 30 years. He's still irrelevant. He's still doing shows. He's still doing tours. He's obviously doing something you're not. I think, I, 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 Larry, I think you said I'm still irrelevant. <laughs> oh, I did say that. I said you're still relevant. Okay, we're going to have to <laughs> listen to the replay. Fiori laughed and I laughed. We both heard it as irrelevant. <laughs> well, uh, I might have been like a shit salesman with a mouth full of it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just rolling across. I'm on vacation. The company's just let me start. Oh, good that. for you. I'm, yeah, I'm telling you, if I was having more fun, I don't believe I could stand it. So, good Mr. DiPaolo, I'll let you go. All God. right, Larry. Good call, and thanks for defending me. Oh, yeah, you're the man. Appreciate it. Bye. You hit up, Mike? <laughs> Am I going to let you hit up? Larry likes me. A white truck driver, I know. I know what you're thinking. 
But this notion I'm trying to be controversial, what are you fucking talking about? Yeah, he really came out swinging out of the gates with a fucking story uh, uh, about the, the Masters. That was pretty controversial. I pushed the envelope with that one. Then I'm defending two black women who love Trump. That boy, that's how to, that's how to fucking get a right-leaning following, huh? People are just, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go to John in Vegas. He has some comments on the Kimmel story. What's up, John? Nick, pleasure to talk to you. Same here. Uh, yeah, I thought Mike was uh, king of all blacks, maybe smoked a sherm this afternoon or something. <laughs> but um, Anyway, hey, if anybody ever wished harm on my baby or infant, I would rip their left eyeball out and show it to their right eyeball. You know, come on. If anybody... You know, yeah, okay, but I don't get your you know, point. I mean, well... Don't talk, don't talk bad. Don't wish harm on my kid. Yeah, but he, but, but Hannity didn't wish harm on Kimmel's kid. That was people on you know on Twitter and and, and social media, which that shit's always going to okay. be out there. So, but yes, yeah, I get your point. I get your point. That's a damn shame. That's a damn shame. Yeah, no, you're but, right. Nice to talk to you. I love your show. You're you're one of the top three people I listen to and pay for this uh, subscription. Oh, good. Please, yeah, please yeah. tell the people that run this place that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Johnny. Good call, buddy. Hey, thank you. You got it. Thank I like Hannity and I like uh, Kimmel. I really do. I mean, I, as people, I really do. They're fucking uh, very nice to me. And uh, I would like one-tenth of their money from each checking account. Uh, folks, this week the uh, Nick is Right tour continues this Friday at the Paramount Theater in Rutland, Vermont. Saturday, April 14th, the Barrington Stage Company in Pittsfield, Mass. Next week, the tour continues. Friday, Friday, April 20th at the Cortland Theater, Cortland, New York. And Saturday, the 21st, the Steel Stacks in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Uh, after that, we go to the Majestic Theater, Pottsville, Pennsylvania. That's the 27th of April. April 28th, the Kirby Center, Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. And then May 4th, Jonathan's in Agunquit, Maine. Guess I got a few of the boys coming that I play ball with up at Maine. Coming to that. Uh, not those boys. Andy's I heard some things hit. about that town. Yeah, well, it's, it's like a gay hangout, but so is Provincetown. I did comedy down there, and Great. boy, I left a trail of dirty condoms all the way up the sidewalk. Uh, May 5th, the Schubert Theater in New Haven, Connecticut is the last date on this leg of the tour. And we got more stuff in the works. Had some interesting conversations on the phone today with a few people. And, uh, we don't know where it's headed. We really don't. Um, is that it? Didn't really get into the girl with the nipples in high school. Having to put band A few Fury says, we'll do that tomorrow. That's what he sends me for a story. Oh, yeah, that'll light up the phones. Who's against that? Hi, I don't like nipples. It was kind of weird, though. They told her to put on a second shirt, and then that didn't, they actually move around and stuff. If you could see Fury's face right now. He, he looks like Alex, a little kid in the shrine. Is well, People like you can send sickles like me $5. I can rent a dirty porn, get a toy for myself. Anyways, uh, that is it, folks. I want to thank you all the callers, even Mike from Atlanta, who really came at me like a madman. Um, I have some type of agenda. You should just be funny and don't fucking reveal your politics because I disagree with them. Anyways, that is it. Remember, kids, you think it. I'll say it. You're welcome. Good night, America. Good night, America.